What's up YouTube? Welcome back. So in this video I want to talk about this whole situation that has recently come to light involving the rapper Sweetie and the rapper Quavo who used to be a couple up until very recently. And of course this shows, just in case you may have not have seen it, or you may have not seen it, it's some elevator footage showing Sweetie and Quavo sort of having a scuffle, um, an altercation, um, you know, and and the situation um, gets physical. Um, you know, not quite, you know, physical like say um, punching or choking or using weapons. But more so, like, you know, pulling, pushing. I think Sweetie attempted to punch him at one point. She may have missed. She may have landed. I'm not sure. And, you know, Quavo sort of um, using his body weight to sort of pull Sweetie into an elevator. And I think he may have swung her into the wall of the elevator as well. So, yeah, I want to talk about that situation and get my thoughts and opinions on that and just some things in general. Um, but as you may or not may or may not know, TMZ is the first news outlet to report this story, and they also came with the footage. You know TMZ always coming through, right? <clears throat> And TMZ has an article that they just posted about yesterday evening um, titled, Quavo Speaks on Elevator Video. Quote, unquote, I haven't abused, unquote, sweetie. So I'm going to kind of read a little bit through this article. It's not super long. And then I'm going to, you know, give more of my thoughts and opinions. All right. So Quavo speaking out for the first time since the video was posted of the elevated altercation between him and Sweetie. And he wants to make one thing clear, all right? He's never physically abused his former girlfriend, all right? So that's what Quavo is coming on record as say, saying, that he never physically abused Sweetie. And to be fair, people have different ideas of what physical abuse is. And, you know, some people may feel like, you know, the pulling and pushing is physical abuse. And, you know, that is an argument. Um, but he's saying that he hasn't. So it's just important to know what does he consider physical abuse. Because some people, it's just like, oh, you know, well, you know, I never, you know, choked her. You know, I never, you know, punched her in the face or something. You know, <clears throat> they get really specific with it, perhaps. So Quavo goes on to say, Quote, unquote, we had an unfortunate situation almost a year ago that we both learned and moved on from. I haven't physically abused Sweetie and have real gratitude for what we did share overall. All right. So he is grateful about what they had. All right. <clears throat> and let's see. Sweetie also chimes in. I think she may have actually spoke first and then Quavo spoke. Um, but Sweetie also says the following, quote unquote, this unfortunate incident happened a year ago. While we have reconciled since then and have moved past this particular disagreement, she's calling this a disagreement, okay. Um, it seems like a bit more than a disagreement, Sweetie. And that might be a problem. I'll save that, save that for later. There were simply too many other hurdles to overcome in our relationship. And we have both since moved on. So she's saying like this wasn't like the straw that broke the camel's back for her. And to be fair, we don't know everything that goes on before the footage. 
things that go on after the footage we just see the footage for what it is and then we just have to speculate and sometimes our speculations can be spot on and sometimes they cannot be spot on I mean people speculated about their relationship prior to this and have speculated positively right and thought that were they were a great couple myself being one of them so I personally feel like this situation, if you really look at it, it's very, 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 there's some symbolism in this, um, in the, in that footage, in that elevator footage. All right. There's some symbolism in there. And the symbolism is Sweetie got caught up trying to secure or steal the bag. Because mind you, had she had left that bag and just ran for the stairs and did some cardio to the stairs she probably might not have ended up in that situation not trying to blame sweetie but i'm just saying sometimes some people seem like they're prioritizing the wrong thing and i think sweetie may be one of those people i think i'm not saying that sweetie is like you know the only concerned about material things and that she's just a super materialistic person but I think that materialism it does drive sweetie and it's not necessarily a bad thing as long as you can know how to keep it in perspective right and to know when to jump off that materialism train if you will but yes, technically, Sweetie got caught up trying to secure or to steal the bag. And from what I heard, um, from what TMZ reported and what other people are saying, um, I think the bag actually does belong to Quavo. It's not even her bag. Because I'm thinking, you know, like, what's in the bag? And they're saying, like, a video game console. I'm like, well, okay, why are you going all doing all this for a video game console? you know both of them really you know but especially sweetie since she's the one that would be in danger um why not just let that video game console go and prioritize you maybe she was trying to get back at him or something i don't know that's just a lot of speculation but let me keep it on topic though um so they saying that it's a call of duty bag on the, on the internet streets and TMZ said that there was a video game console in the bag and people saying that the bag is Quavo's bag and I think TMZ also said that that it was Quavo's bag you know because <clears throat> I'm looking at this video footage prior to knowing what's in the bag and I'm like whatever is in the bag I'm thinking like sweetie you know I think you're in danger I think you need to forego the bag and just Keep it pushing to the stairwell, maybe try and get some help or something, instead of trying to get on the elevator. In emergencies, you're not supposed to use an elevator, right? I think we all should know that by now. Is it a fires or is it just emergencies in general? Because I feel like it may just be fires. Maybe that's where the confusion came in. But in emergencies, you probably should not use the elevator. Uh, you know. But then again, some people they do use elevators when they are like you know someone maybe collapse and then the paramedics come in and put them on the stretcher and take them out and they use the elevator to get there perhaps but in this situation nah all right <clears throat> and i'm just thinking what's in this bag like unless your soul in this is in this bag and quavo is trying to deliver this bag that contains your soul to Satan, to the devil, I'm like, you know, maybe you should forego that. I mean, are you the icy queen or something like that you call yourself. This stuff can be replaced, you know, and need be, um, get the cops involved. But really, this ain't really her bag from what I heard, though. <clears throat> All right. So there was someone who saw them, you know, at least he may not have seen it go down but he did see something that was a little strange right 
I mean, he just kept it pushing. That is something to be aware of, too. A lot of times, people see some stuff that just don't look right, but just don't speak on it, don't get involved, don't do anything. And I can't totally blame him because, you know, sometimes if you get involved in these domestic disputes, sometimes you could be putting yourself in danger, especially if the if it involves weapons and, like, the violence has escalated, you know. What this sweetie's family, well, I guess maybe... Well, I don't know if she even told her family about this. Probably not. But since they know now, what does Sweetie's family have to say about this? Especially, like, her male family members. Um, I know she has a dad. I'm not sure if she has brothers or not. You know. What her people got to say about this? So, you know, and something else to bring up here is, like, you know, for the women out there, you know, and really just for people just in general, but especially the women out there. Would a situation like this be a deal breaker for you if you found yourself in a situation like this, you know? And, you know, just answer honestly to yourself. And just, you know, explain why or why not. You know? <clears throat> and why did she stay? Why did she stay slash go back? You know, so obviously this wasn't a deal breaker for for Sweetie for whatever reason. Um, a lot of people are blaming Sweetie for this. Yeah. Maybe this situation, as quiet as it's kept, maybe this situation was like a turn on. I think some women, not saying all, but a segment of women who be in these sort of like situations like this, I feel like they get a turn on from this this type of stuff. A segment, not all. <clears throat> maybe this was like, maybe this perhaps is like black love. You know, maybe this is what people feel like black love is all about. You know, the struggle, the drama. You know, it's just so much passion, right? This is what black love is all about. Maybe. And then some people gonna come through and be like, well, sweetie mix, so it ain't black love. It's black and mixed love. Eh, all right. I don't know. <clears throat> That's debatable. But <clears throat> we got bigger fish to fry right now. So another thing I want to bring up is this whole high quality, well, high value man thing. You know, and there's nothing wrong with wanting, you know, women wanting high value men. But this goes to show you that you also need to incorporate high quality into that. And honestly, this is across the board, whether you want a high value man, a mid value man, man, a low value man, a no value man, a great value man, get them at Walmart for the low low. But no matter what, that high quality, you have to look for that. Because I think some people just feel like, some of these women just feel like it's implied. Like, oh, if he's low value, then he must be at least high quality and have good character and good morals and that, that, and that. Not necessarily true. If he's high value, that's not necessarily true if he's high, that he's high quality with the high value. So across the board, whatever value of men that you're dealing with, you need to factor in and incorporate screening, like a process for screening for high quality, you know, character, morals, ethics, things along those lines. You know, that is important. And I think in all these conversations that just gets thrown to the wayside or it just gets ignored and, you know, I'm not trying to mess up anybody's bag and, you know, undermine anybody's content. But I think they just need to find a way to incorporate high quality into that. I think maybe sometimes they just feel like it's implied that, oh, well, yeah, you should also look for high quality. Yeah. Um, but I think that needs to be emphasized a bit more.
because I would say that Quavo is high quality, but he is high value in the sense that he has like a lot of money, monetary, you know, finances, right? As far as I know, he got more money than me. But is he high quality? You know, you've seen this elevator footage, right? You've seen, you heard the rumors of infidelity, right? His rap lyrics, you know? Um, so, yeah. But, you know, this situation, it just goes to show you that we really don't know what goes on behind closed doors. Because on the outside, looking in, at a distance, they look like a great couple. You know, they look like a nice couple. You know, I initially liked them as a couple, and I was rooting for them. I was like, okay, this going to be the non-problematic, you know, um, biracial girl, light, um, brown skin, dark skin, do couple. I'm like, okay, well, that's what's up. Let's, you know, push that. You know, I'm rooting for y'all. Not no more. All right. <clears throat> Not no more. And also, people use this situation to throw in sweet, Sweetie's face that, oh, Birkin bags and eight figure ends. <laughs> you know, and like, oh, you know, this is what you was going through for a Birkin bag. Oh, this is what you was going through for an eight figure jigger. Uh uh. <laughs> you got your nerve. Right. <clears throat> and I'm like, you know, why are people wanting to bring that up? You know, especially like the women. You know, why do they feel the need to bring that up? And I think maybe some people were offended when Sweetie made those comments, particularly about the Birkin bags. And maybe feeling like she was insulting them because she's saying like, oh, look, I can get a dude that can afford a Birkin bag and you can't, you know, maybe. So they're like, hey, since you want to take jabs at me, I'm going to take a jab at you. Perhaps. Um, but when I personally, when I heard it, I just took it as a joke. You know, she just stunting for the gram, so, you know, stunting for social media or whatever, you know. But that just goes to show you as well, you do got to, you got to be careful about what you put out there because it can come back and kind of slap you in the face a little bit there. All right. And as well, sweetie, I do feel like sweetie may be a little materialistic, you know a little too concentrated on material things. And I'm not saying that she can't have any desires for anything that's materialistic and that she can't enjoy the money that she earns. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying that it may be a bit too much concentration on materialistic things to a point where she is putting, where she was putting up with and accepting infidelity and as well accepting the situation that we saw unfold in that footage of them in the elevator and some things that we don't know about you know and I guess maybe that's why she was acting the way that she was acting on that show uh, respectfully Justin I saw like a clip of it because um, I'm like you know initially before knowing what I know now I was like you know that does look a little like disrespect well, I don't think she should have even went on that show to begin with because that was um, a show that her ex-boyfriend host or co-host or whatever um, but knowing what I know now she probably did that strategically orchestrated on purpose right <laughs> she just you know did that all on purpose And do you think that Sweetie is going to get like the Megan the Stallion treatment? Like folks going to treat her like they treated Megan the Stallion when she ended up in her situation with Tori? More or less, probably. Thankfully, Sweetie's situation isn't that bad compared to Megan the Stallion's situation. But still, 
folks are going to put the blame on Sweetie, both black men and black women, you know. Black men are going to say that she shouldn't have been stealing Quavo's bag, which she should not have. That's his property that belongs to him. Maybe I guess she bought it and she feel like, oh, well, you cheated on me, so I'm going to take this back. Eh, you know, I can understand feeling some type of a way about being led on and lied to and cheated on. But at the end of the day, ain't you the icy queen or whatever you call yourself? That's charity for you. Just, all right, yeah, I just donated to some charity. Let me bounce. Let me go get, you know, let you go get yourself another eight-figure jigger, you know? Because you teaching the women how to get eight-figure jigger, so you sh should be able to replace this dude in a heartbeat, or at least not too much of a issue replacing him. But this does show you that, you know, the exoticals, they can get it too. All right. The exoticals are not exempt. All right. The exoticals, <laughs> you know, they may get put on the pedestal, perhaps. But at the end of the day, they fall hard from that pedestal. When you be put up so high on such a high pedestal, the fall hurts. It does. Right? Just like when people want to put themselves up on such a high pedestal, and when they fall, they fall hard. Right? And again, people are more likely to blame Sweetie for this and blame her, saying that she shouldn't have took the bag, which she should not have. Um, perhaps Quavo could have been a bit more mature about the situation and not taking it there. I don't know since I don't know all the details that go into that, you know. <clears throat> and I know, you know, the black man going to be coming through and saying that she shouldn't have taken the bag. And that's what she get for taking that, taking that jigger bag. You ain't supposed to be taking no jigger bag like that, right? And you shouldn't be taking stuff, folk stuff. That's true. And then, you know. The mammies, the picnics, the mules, they're going to come through and be all like, well, she shouldn't have been talking about doing that to that black king trying to steal his stuff. You know, if I were that black king, I would have did the same thing. She, I would have swung her up against the elevator wall and stomped her into the ground, too. Granted, he didn't do that part. Um, but, you know, you know how the mammies, the picnics, the mules be extra about it, right? <clears throat> but, you know, mammy's going to mammy. Pikmin's gonna beg to be pit. Mule's gonna mule. That's their feel. Alright. And this situation also sort of shows somewhat of a hierarchy at play here. Right? We've seen a hierarchy at play here where, you know, these black men are on top of this hierarchy, you know. And the because we I have went over the colorism hierarchy with you before in a previous video, right? You know, I went over that before, right? But I'll go through a quick run through of the colorism hierarchy. I have a whole video about that going through it, but I'll give you a quick rundown, though, right? So <clears throat> it's going to be in the black community, all right? It's going to be like the brown skin, dark skin dudes at the top. In between that group, probably the brown skin dudes are on top, and then the dark skin dudes. Then it's going to be the biracial light skin chicks with the biracial girls being on top above the light skin women. Uh, then it's going to be the uh, biracial light-skinned dudes, light-skinned dudes on top, then the biracial dudes on the bottom. And then it's going to be brown-skinned, dark-skinned women on the bottom, with the brown-skinned women being on top of the dark-skinned women. All right. <clears throat> so this situation just shows that this hierarchy is still at play, even though the people at the top of the heart, the hierarchy may favor people of the hierarchy that are under them. But still, at the end of the day, when it comes down to them, themselves versus the other folks, they're going to choose themselves and they're going to prioritize themselves, right? And that's just, I'd say ultimately that's expected, you know. <clears throat> and also we're showing like a hierarchy of protection and privilege, right? 
Quavo is being protected more so, at least in the black community. We're not so quick to say that, oh, Quavo should have did this, Quavo should have did that, Quavo should not have did that. Oh, look at what Quavo is doing, that's terrible. People are more concentrated on Sweetie and what she did do, or didn't do, or whatever, right? And even, honestly, even in this video, I've kind of concentrated more so on Sweetie. Uh, <clears throat> although I've, I've touched on Quavo, but I haven't really gone in on Quavo, right? Why is that? Maybe perhaps this is even subconsciously. But I think for me, I'm not trying to blame Sweetie, but I'm just trying to say, like, you know, sometimes... The choices that you make can play a big role in the situations that you get into or that you open yourself up to. So that's where I'm more so coming from with it, not to just blame Sweetie because, again, I really don't know. And I feel like in the situation, um, I do put more weight on Quavo because... At the end of the day, Quavo is a man, Sweetie is a woman, right? And there are basically biological differences that differentiate men from women. Some people don't want to acknowledge that, but that is true. I think the people on my channel, I think we overall do acknowledge that there's biological differences between men and women. And one of those is um, like strength and muscle mass and things like that. And I think Quavo is in a more powerful position position than sweetie is right so i put more weight on him as far as how he conducts himself since he's in the position to do more harm more physical harm with you know his strength than sweetie is sweetie holds responsibility too for her actions don't get me wrong but me personally, I would put more weight on Quavo. It's kind of like I'll give an analogy like, oh, you know, <clears throat> people who are driving cars versus people who are pedestrians. Yes, pedestrians should not have been, you know, breaking the rules and jaywalking and things like that. True. And that is, you know, their fault, right? They broke the rules. They broke the law, right? But if you hit a pedestrian, they still have the right of way, even if they were in the wrong, right? Why is that? I mean, if you think about it, you know, hey, they broke the law. You know, I didn't mean to hit them, but they were just in the wrong place at the wrong time. But, well, folks are using common sense and saying, like, you know, you're operating a two-ton vehicle, and this person is just a person without no protection, so hmm, maybe we should give more priority to protecting this person. You know, right? So that's my analogy about that. But whose fault is this? Who's to blame? Is it Quavo's fault? Is it Sweetie's fault? Is it both of this fault? Whose fault is it? And who leaked this foot footage to TMZ? Sweetie? Who leaked this footage? So, you know, what do y'all guys think about Quavo now? Is he still who you thought he was? You know, what do you guys think about Sweetie? Is she still who you thought she was? All right. Let me know about what you think about all this situation in the comments section. Until the next video, adios and goodbye for now.